Today I have the top five OneNote tips for you that are easily missed because they're somewhat hidden. They're gonna help you improve your processes, become more productive, and also keep you safe. Some time ago, I did a video on how to use OneNote effectively. If you missed it, the link is in the description below and also in the cards. Check it out if you haven't done so already or if you're new to OneNote. Many of you commented on that video and provided some more hidden tips. Today, I'm sharing the highlights from our community. First of all, thank you so much for all your feedback on the first OneNote video. I learned a lot from your comments. That's the best part about the community we created here. Before we jump in, I'd like to briefly thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is a learning platform with lots of great classes, and I have a special link for you that gives you two months free premium access. It's in the description of this video, but I'm gonna chat more about them towards the end, so stay tuned for that. Now let's get started with the hidden tips. Number one, protect your notes. Many use OneNote to store personal information that must stay private. Since your notes are synced and saved in the cloud, data security is important. A great way to add a layer of security is to use OneNote's password protection. Remember, the three main hierarchy levels in OneNote are notebook, section, and page. OneNote lets you password protect individual sections. To do that, Right-click on the section you want to protect and select Password Protection. Then click on Add Password. Enter a password and a second time to confirm it. Then click on OK. You will get this lock item on the section. If you click on the lock, it's going to close. This way, next time you want to open the section, OneNote will prompt you to enter the password. To remove the password, right-click on the section, select Password Protection, and remove password. Enter the current password, and after you hit OK, the lock is going to disappear. That's a great feature to keep things private. Just a couple of things to be aware of. Number one, OneNote uses encryption to secure password protected sections. If you forget any of your section passwords, no one is going to be able to unlock those notes for you. Number two, OneNote is going to automatically lock protected sections after a few minutes of inactivity. And number three, notes on pages in password protected sections will not be included in search. So if you want them included, you must first unlock these sections. Number two, share your notes. Another great feature in OneNote is the possibility to share notebooks meaning multiple people can access the same notebook simultaneously. OneNote will keep track of the changes each person is making. To enable collaboration, simply open the notebook you want to share and click Share in the upper right corner, typing the name or email address you want to send the link to. Up here in the link settings, you can be more specific who you want to give access to. So if anyone with a link can access, only colleagues in your organization, or people who already have access. I usually select the last option and give access to specific people only. Down here, you can also choose whether you want to allow editing of the notebook or just viewing. Once you made your selections, simply press send. If you're using a private Microsoft account, you will see a slightly different interface, but the functionality is similar. The possibility to share notebooks is great if you're working on a project with other team members, or you can also use it as a type of knowledge base for your company. One last thing, to remove someone or change who has access, go to the shared notebook, click on share, and then the ellipsis to manage access. Here you can update or delete the links you created. Number three, clip the web. The OneNote Web Clipper is the easiest way to get information from the web into OneNote. It's a browser extension that you can download for Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. The Web Clipper lets you quickly clip all or part of a web page to OneNote and save it for later. First, install the Web Clipper from the App Store of your choice. Once installed, you'll see a OneNote button up here in your web browser. 
The first time you click on it, you're going to have to sign in into your Microsoft account. Afterwards, when you click the clip to OneNote icon in the browser's toolbar, you get to choose to clip the entire page as it appears on the page, a section of the page, just drag and release to select it, just the article in a simple to read format without ads or other distractions, or you can also save the page as a bookmark. With full page and region, the clip is saved as an image, but I prefer it to clip as text. So usually I select article. This way also all links remain clickable. Down here, you can select which notebook and section to save your clipping to. Then hit clip and your selection is saved to the OneNote notebook. If you frequently need to clip items from the web, I can really recommend the OneNote Web Clipper. It's a fast and simple way to save content from the web right into OneNote. Number four, hyperlink your notes. The next tip is somewhat of a hidden feature, but can be quite helpful. It's to create links within OneNote from one page to another. This is great if you tend to collect a lot of notes like me. You can create hyperlinks and move around your notes really fast. Or you can create a quick table of contents with hyperlinks to other areas in your notes. In OneNote, you can create links to notebooks, sections, pages, and even specific paragraphs. Let me show you how. The first thing we'll do is to create a link to a specific notebook. We select a notebook we want to link to. Right click and select copy link to notebook. Then go to the page you want to insert the link to. Just use the shortcut control V. This paste the link to your notebook. Now you can click it and it's going to take you right there. The same way you can also create a link to a certain section. Right click on the section you want to link to and select copy link to section. Then just paste that link and it will take you directly to the section. Linking to a specific page works exactly the same way. Just right click on the page and select copy link to page. If you have a long page with a lot of content, it may make sense to link to a specific paragraph on that page. To do that, go to the paragraph you want to link to, right click and select copy link to paragraph. With Control V, you can paste this link. When clicked, it's going to take you directly to your paragraph. By the way, if you don't like the hyperlink text, you can change that too. Just right click on the link, select link and edit link. Up here, you can change the text that you want displayed for your hyperlink. From here, you can also create a desktop shortcut and paste the link to your note. Right click on the link and select copy link. Go to desktop, right mouse click, and create a new shortcut. Paste in the link, give it a name, and now you can jump directly to that specific note from your desktop. The other thing you can do on your mobile is to add a link to a OneNote page on your home screen. This is great for notes you constantly need, like shopping lists. Go to the page you want to link to, and click on the three dots up here. Select Add to Home Screen. So now I get an icon here that takes me directly to this particular page without having to open OneNote first and navigating to the right page. Number five, automate meeting minutes. Many of us spend a good chunk of time in meetings. A good way to actually get something out of a meeting are meeting minutes. You can summarize the outcome and hold people accountable for their to-dos. But writing these notes can be a pain, especially if you let time pass after the meeting. So that's where this tip comes in. Use the seamless integration of OneNote to Outlook to automate meeting minutes. Let me show you how. When in OneNote, go to the Insert tab and click on Meeting Details up here. The first time you do this, you'll have to establish a connection between OneNote and Outlook by logging in. Once this is established, it's going to bring up your meetings for the day over here, or you can select any day from the dropdown. So let's say I have this meeting and I want to take meeting notes. I create a new page and then click on the meeting. It will automatically import the details of the meeting into this container together with a hyperlink back to the appointment in your calendar. And it even creates a title for your note. 
you can show the participant list by clicking expand here. And down here, you can add your notes. You can add links, pictures, and if you agreed on certain action items in the meeting, make sure to include these in the notes. But that's not all. When you're done with the meeting notes, you can immediately distribute your notes to the participants. Here, next to the list of participants, OneNote conveniently provides a link, email meeting notes. When you click this link, it's going to open up an email, automatically set the attendees as your recipients, and attach a link to your meeting note. So this is a seamless and efficient way of creating and distributing meeting minutes. Just note that the recipients of the meeting minutes need to have access to the notebook you're sharing. So I recommend that you create notebooks in your OneNote for specific types of recurring meetings and share the access with the participants. This way, when they receive your email with the meeting notes, they just need to click the link and then they can access the notebook in OneNote. These were my hidden tips for OneNote. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. Skillshare offers thousands of classes for curious people looking to learn new skills or who want to improve their existing skills. You're going to find topics like design, productivity, freelancing, video, photography, and a lot more. The classes are set up in such a way that they include a combination of video lessons and a class project. Now, as a member, you get unlimited access to thousands of classes. Skillshare also keeps adding new topics and new classes, so you can continue exploring and learning as much as you like. Most classes are under 60 minutes, they're organized into multiple short lessons, and you can go back and revisit a class as much as you like. Now, Skillshare is also really affordable. It costs less than $10 a month if you get the annual subscription. The good news is that the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description are going to get two month free trial of premium membership so that you can continue learning and exploring new topics without getting disturbed by ads. Check it out when you're ready. I hope you found the tips in today's video helpful. Thanks again for sharing all your great tips and tricks. And don't forget to check out the first OneNote video in case you missed it, because there were a lot more tips in that video. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to improve your skills, consider subscribing so it's easier for you to find my videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.